This week, Hungary's foreign minister made a brief trip to Trinidad and Tobago. As the tectonic plates of geopolitics continue to move, Peter Ciarto talks to us about Europe's interests in the Dragon Gas deal, trade relations across the Atlantic, and Hungary's close alliance with Russia. Peter Ciarto, Minister of Foreign Affairs and Trade from Hungary. Welcome to Trinidad and Tobago and welcome to the program. Thank you so much for your very kind invitation. You come to this region at a very interesting time, an interesting time in the Russia-Ukraine conflict, an interesting time in local politics in your own country of Hungary and as well, uh, the rotating presidency of the European Union will fall to Hungary in a matter of months. With all of the unfolding drama in Europe, what brings you to the Caribbean? Well, uh, I think one of the three uh, issues you have listed would have been enough to come. Uh, but uh, more specifically to Trinidad and Tobago, this is the first ever visit of a, a Hungarian foreign minister to this country, which is a shameful situation and I had to start to repair it. And uh, together with your foreign minister, we have made some big steps today uh, towards mutual understanding and working on uh, cooperation schemes uh, which could improve the relationship between the, uh, the two countries. Hungary is uh, now preparing to take over the uh, presidency of the Council of the European Union as of 1st of July and we will complete our job at the end of the year. So it takes six months. And during these six months uh, there is a lot on the agenda of the European Union when it comes to external relations. And uh, there's a lot on our agenda when it comes to energy security. And when it comes to energy security and external relations in one basket, then it equals Trinidad and Tobago uh, for sure. Because the European Union has made uh, two important decisions to include two of your major projects into the so-called Global Gateway Programme which is the international development program of the European Union. First, the 90 kilometer long uh, submarine pipeline, which would deliver the gas from Venezuela to your LNG facility. And second, to uh, make your uh, petrochemical industry even greener and more environmentally productive. So implementation of these two agreements uh, will be started throughout our presidency term and we are committed to uh, support you on the successful implementation of these two projects and to make sure that the European support uh, will be there for the, uh, for the entire, entire length uh, of these projects. Let's talk a little bit about the oil and gas industry. Yep. Uh, it's something that you have had to face a lot of questions about in recent times, not just uh, before the Russia-Ukraine conflict, but particularly in light of the Russia-Ukraine conflict, uh, hun the Hungarian government has come under scrutiny and sometimes criticism for purchasing and the, the oil and gas deals uh, that it has made with Russia. You are in an oil and gas country in Trinidad and Tobago. What opportunities lie uh, between Trinidad and Tobago and Hungary? Well, first of all, we have always been looking at the issue of energy supply and the security of the energy supply as an issue uh, related to physical reality. And we were never ready to look at the uh, issue of energy supply as if it was of ideological nature. For us, energy is not a matter of ideology. For us, energy is a matter of physical reality and security, so therefore, we have never given up our energy cooperation with Russia and I have to tell you that we will never give up that cooperation because A, this cooperation is beneficial for us, B, this cooperation has uh, uh, given security of supply to us, C, this uh, cooperation takes place with a reliable partner. And since the energy supply routes are determined by infrastructure, whether you want to buy gas from another region, it's a matter of whether you have a pipeline there or not. And since uh, the uh, composition of the pipelines in our region uh, makes it impossible 
to get rid of the Russian sources. We never had such a plan. So regardless of what the European friends of ours are expecting from us, we will continue to, um, to cooperate with the Russians on energy matters. Otherwise, we would not be able to supply our country and none of these European friends would help us who are now putting pressure on us. Now, when it comes to Trinidad and Tobago, you know, um, you can easily become a part of the European diversification strategy. When it comes to diversification, we don't mean substituting or replacing or changing the already existing sources, but to uh, have new sources, to add the new ones. And Trinidad and Tobago could easily be the first gate, the first transit point in the energy cooperation between the European Union and the Caribbean region. Your fantastic facility of Atlantic LNG port with its 20 billion euro capacity annually can be a great source for um, improving the diversification efforts in uh, Europe. And since we have uh, LNG facilities on the European uh, seashores as well, for us it would be easy to include uh, gas from this region to our energy mix. The question is only whether technically we are ready and uh, what would be the price. So, but, uh, but I mean we can come to these questions only in case we are ready physically and we have a political openness. And we definitely do have both. Mr. Minister, I do want to ask you, you mentioned that Europe has taken the responsibility of helping Trinidad and Tobago with the pipeline project uh, between Venezuela and Trinidad and Tobago and vice versa. Given the geopolitics that is at play with, particularly with this situation, we look at sanctions from the United States on Venezuela. How tricky will be that to maneuver, given that your country is about to host the presidency of this particular project, the European Union? Look, generally speaking, we are against uh, the approach of sanctions because we cannot recall one single sanction regime which would have been successful. We cannot recall any single uh, sanction regime which would have hit, targeted the leadership of that given country, but we know many sanction regimes which have at the end of the day harmed the people of that given country. Unfortunately, Europe is a front runner of failed sanction policy because all the sanctions uh, which have been implemented by the European Union against the Russian Federation proved to be failing. Uh, we were not successful with the original target which was pushing Russia on its knees and then uh, make uh, Russia unable to continue the war. That's total failure. Russia's economy is doing well and uh, the war uh, is going on unfortunately and peace is further away. D than do ever you before. feel that the United States sanctions on Venezuela are also failing? Well, actually what I understood from the Venezuelan situation is that the, uh, the reason of the sanctions was that, uh, that the United States was very uncomfortable with the leadership of Venezuela, not the leadership state. And as far as I understand, the current president has a good chance to become re-elected uh, on the elections which uh, will take place soon. So who is harmed by the sanctions, if not the leadership? The people. And uh, therefore, I do believe that, uh, that if there were no sanctions on the energy field at least, new volumes of gas could be added to the global, uh, uh, global scene and also more gas could be added to the European market. And if I understand correctly, you became, as Trinidad and Tobago, a collateral damage of the sanctions imposed by the United States against Venezuela, because those sanctions have made it impossible that you work more closely with the Venezuelans on, on energy matters and helping Europe to diversify. Coming up next, the impact of a Donald Trump presidency on the Dragon Gas deal. of months you have already made it clear publicly that you support uh, Republican the Republican Party within the United States uh, if Donald Trump is to be re-elected in November 
Uh, and while the EU presidency is in the hands of Hungary, do you see that beneficial to the people of Trinidad and Tobago and Venezuela when it comes to this gas deal? First of all, I want to emphasize that since we are not Americans, uh, we uh, cannot uh, support any of the two candidates. I mean, but, I mean in a CNN but, interview with yeah, Christian yeah, Amonpour, yeah, you, did, you did publicly say but, that, yeah. you, that you will support, yeah, but, you do hope that the Republicans uh, yeah. gain power. You did yeah, say that's that. Absolutely, that, but that's a difference. We do hope that he is winning, but we cannot support him because we are not Americans. But so, absolutely, but, but if he is to be re-elected, which yeah. he has a very good chance, the polls are showing. And hopefully he will. Do yeah. you feel, uh, there we go again, uh, do you feel that the EU presidency being in the hands mm -hmm. of Hungary yeah. will assist the diplomacy between the United States and Venezuela so much so that Trinidad and Tobago can be a beneficiary? Well, I, have, I would say the following, that with President Trump, I think there's a bigger chance for realistic discussions and for common sense based decisions than with the current administration. That's my feeling, that's my, more than feeling, that's my experience, that, that's what the two track records uh, have uh, put uh, forward. So if you remember the, um, the track record of President Trump, he was able to uh, make deals on some pragmatic issues and pragmatic areas. So I think that making pragmatic decision on that matter has a bigger chance with President Trump in the position of the President of the United States than with the current administration. And I still do believe that with President Trump, peace can come to Europe as well. And with President Trump, the global trade wars uh, could be uh, cooled uh, down as well. And I do hope that with President Trump, uh, better circumstances will be created for the further development of the energy cooperation in this region, giving benefit to Trinidad and Tobago. We would definitely be uh, happy and supportive to that. Let's talk a little bit about uh, other aspects of your trip, other aspects beyond the trade of oil and gas. What other potential opportunities lie across the Atlantic between Hungary and Trinidad and Tobago when it comes to trade? Well, um, first of all, we understand that uh, you are very uh, lucky with your nature. Therefore, uh, food industry, uh, cuisine, uh, is absolutely developed uh, and adored uh, by us. So I'm pretty sure that the food products of this region, especially the ones of Trinidad and Tobago, could hit big success on our market. Uh, and we also do understand that you are producing the best cocoa on the world, uh, of the world. And we understand that your chocolate is something which is looked uh, or uh, demanded pretty much globally. So I do believe that food industry exports uh, from Trinidad and Tobago towards Europe, including Hungary, could be a big success. And we definitely do encourage that. What, um, what the topics of discussion have centered around your conversation between both ministries, your ministry as well as Minister Amy Brown? We have discussed a lot about the security situation. We have discussed a lot about uh, the similarity of the challenges we have been faced with. Uh, we are more than 9,000 kilometers far away from each other, but uh, we have similar kind of challenges to be faced with. For example, migration. Migration is one of the most important security-related challenges in Europe. We understand it's the same here in Trinidad and Tobago. And I was happy to understand that we look at this issue through very similar glasses. Uh, since you do consider it as a matter of concern when it comes to security of your country, we do the same back in Hungary. If uh, you are representing an anti-migration policy, you are usually stigmatized as xenophobic, uh, extremist, anti-human, and so on and so forth. And I think that all countries should be given the sovereign right to decide whom they allow to enter the territory of their respective countries and with whom they are ready to live together or with whom not. So therefore, we will always support your uh, very sovereignistic type of approach when it comes to migration because we represent uh, the same one. And we have also spoken about another issue where I really like your position and it's very enlightening to see that in other parts of the world you have a similar approach than you yourself. And this is about diplomacy. So diplomacy is, is not designed only to meet and talk to those with whom you agree 100%. Diplomacy is about talking to your partners with whom you might disagree. 
And especially in, under the current circumstances, when you have security related crises all over the world, it's extremely important to keep channels of communication open and not to politicize the operation of the big international organizations. So your pro-peace position, your pro-diplomacy position uh, fall very, very close to our positions in this regard. Up next, Hungary's close relationship with Russia. How do we construe uh, the relationship between Hungary and Russia here in the Caribbean? of regional interest in the Caribbean right now would be the Venezuela-Guyana conflict that keeps uh, escalating and then de-escalating and then escalating again. What will be the position of Prime Minister Viktor Orban uh, when it comes to this conflict that reached a height during uh, Christmas last year, simmered and has in recent weeks gone up again? Well, we can just um, rely on our own experience in Europe in this regard. And our experience from the last years and decades is that in case, in case it is possible to isolate such kind of conflicts, then do so and do not globalize them. I think the, uh, the major mistake European Union has committed regarding the war between Ukraine and Russia was that instead of isolating the conflict and globalization of the conflict took place. Too many have been involved. Many Europeans feel that this is, uh, leaders feel that this is their war as well. They want to be engaged, you know. They are now speaking about sending boots on the ground and all these kind of very dangerous things. So here, I mean, I would, or, or based on European, uh, you know, experience, isolating the conflict is, is always uh, helpful. And then, and then... How is that different from turning a blind eye to the humanitarian crisis gripping a country like Ukraine? Um, look, we. And by the way, so yeah. the humanitarian crisis is spilling over. It's your neighborhood, yeah. and you have over a million migrants coming into your country. Yeah, refugees. Yeah. Refugees. Yeah. More than a more than a million refugees we have received. Uh, there are still 1,600 schools and kindergartens in Hungary. But but, but I'm where, asking. Yeah. I'm asking. How do we draw the line between isolating it, as you yeah. say, and the international community watching on? to what is really a crisis unfolding, and not just, by the way, in Ukraine, but now happening on the Gaza Strip. Yeah, this is basically an art. I mean, international politics is kind of art, because, for example, on the Gaza issue, we have to make sure that elimination of Hamas takes place, and we have to make sure that not such a terrorist attack will be repeated against anyone in the world compared to what has happened on the 7th of October. But in the meantime, we have to make sure the civilian population is protected. That must be a very clear expectation towards all, that civilization, uh, civil uh, population must be protected. And we have to make sure that terrorist organizations never use civilian people, men, women, children, as human shield. How do we construe uh, the relationship between Hungary and Russia here in the Caribbean, given that uh, Russia is seen as the perpetrator of this war. Ukraine is seen as the victim. Hungary uh, has, uh, while condemned the war in the very early days, the Russian invasion, has now uh, had several deals signed with the Russian government. How, would, how do you think the people of the Caribbean should construe that relationship? Um, the question is not what we do think about the war, because I think there's a common understanding together with your foreign ministry we have agreed that we condemn the war we think it's a bad thing it's unacceptable and it should be stopped the question is how you make the peace because i cannot recall any war which would have been decided on the battlefield and this war will not be decided on the battlefield as well none of the two parties can win the war so then what is the solution negotiations ceasefire negotiations peace talk and the peace agreement the question is when the question is when? And our answer is that the sooner the better. And I tell you why, because I don't think people in the Caribbean knows the following, know the following. There's a really significant Hungarian community living in Ukraine, 150,000 Hungarians. Since they are ethnic Hungarians, but Ukrainian citizens, obviously, the conscription and mobilization rules are being applied to them as well. So there are many Hungarians who have already died in this war. 
So no Dutch, no Luxembourgish, no Danish have died in this war, but many Hungarians did. So therefore, we look at it from a different angle. Look at the war at a different angle. And our angle is that we have to save lives of the people. Now, how you save lives of the people? You stop the war uh, immediately. And when it comes to uh, our cooperation with Russia, look, we condemn the war, but this is not our war. Russia did not attack us. So therefore, on, on, on issues which are not restricted by sanctions, or on issues which are falling in line with our national interests, we do cooperate with the Russians, and we do have the interest to improve this cooperation with the Russians, where the sanctions are, do not, are, are not being uh, applied. So it's a rational strategy based on uh, national interest. When you look at what you've just said, and we, uh, uh, you know, how do we now look towards the European Union, one of the most major and influential organizations there is when it comes to continents on the world? Hungary taking charge of the EU from July 1st. What can the world expect when Hungary takes that mantle, especially with a war in the middle of its yard? Yeah. Look, unfortunately, Europe has been losing a lot of competitiveness and losing a lot of strength in the last couple of years. And it's mathematics. Um, EU used to be, used to have the second largest portion of uh, global GDP. Now we are only number three. Uh, Europe used to be a peaceful confident, uh, continent. Now we are struggling uh, from a war. Uh, Europe used to be a rational continent. Now debates are being put on a totally ideological basis. So what we Hungarians want is to make European Union stronger. Now, how you make European Union stronger? That you make the member states stronger, and based on stronger member states, you will have a stronger European Union. And that's the core of the debate in the EU. Because currently the debate is about whether European Union should go into a more federalistic way or to a more, let's say, integration of uh, sovereign countries. Okay? And we Hungarians do belong to the sovereignist camp. And we don't want European Union to be transformed into a United States of Europe. We don't want European Union to be more federalistic. We don't want more competences from the national level to be brought to Brussels. And this is going to be a big debate uh, during our presidency, especially, especially that the European Parliament elections will take place on the 9th of June, followed by us taking over the presidency. So I'm pretty sure that the first part of our presidency uh, will be active with all this bargaining, you know, who's going to take what position, uh, who's going to be what commissioner, what president in the upcoming period of time and what direction the European Union will uh, choose. It's a very interesting time in European politics. Minister Peter Sejato, thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate the invitation. Thank you so much.